So um, in this video, we're going to review how to take a blood glucose or test a blood glucose or blood sugar. You may also hear it referred to as AccuCheck. Um, that's a brand specific, but it's kind of widely used term, just like Kleenex, for example. So um, that's what we're going to go over that process um, and just sort of an example of a home machine versus the the most common machine that you'll see in facilities, which is this one, comes on that stand. Um, so to start, you wanna make sure you have the, the supplies that you need, depending on the situation you're doing it in. Um, so we have gloves ready to go, cotton balls for afterwards, a Band-Aid if needed, alcohol swabs. Um, we have our test strips. So for the facility uh, machine, um, these are the strips. It's called a stat strip, um, so we'll just kind of put that together. For the example of the home machine that we're using, um, this is how the strips come for this one. Um, and most home machines are, they're pretty similar. They just have little variations, different buttons and stuff, but they do pretty much the same thing. We have our sharps container for when we're done with our lancets um, and for also the um, contaminated strip with the blood on it can go in there um, as well. So uh, we'll get started. Um, I'll just go over some of, you see a couple different styles here of lancets. It doesn't want to stand up. So um, you'll see kind of all different types um, in people's home settings or in the hospital. Most common in facility actually are these two um, that you'll see and now more so even this one. Um, so I'll just kind of focus on those two um, for now. Um, they all kind of function very similarly. This one you'll see has a cap on it um, and a very clearly marked um, lengths of the needle. So when you take it off, the needle isn't showing and that's for safety. It will only activate and poke when it's depressed into the um, desired area, like the side of the finger is most common. And if you have someone maybe who has um, more calloused fingers um, and it needs to go a little bit deeper, for example, you can dial that up and so you get a longer um, length of needle. Um, and uh, opposite, you can go to, to have it be a bit shorter. So depending on the patient and situation, um, typically if you don't know um, or the person's new to AccuChecks, you just kind of start in the middle range. Um, and same idea then for this purple one where you can dial this to different um, lengths of needle. For this one to activate the um, like remove the cap, um, you would just pull that tab off. So it's usually kind of a twist and pull. Um, you don't want to bend it or anything, it just kind of easily pulls off. Um, and then this is what you would put up against the person's um, skin to have the poke happen. Um, these other two are very similar to that where you just sort of twist and pull their tabs off and then they're ready to be activated. Um, once they're touching the, the skin, they do not have um, size or needle length change um, options on them. So it's just the size that it that it is. You get what you get there. So uh, we'll start with the uh, hospital machine. Um, so you always want to start by washing your hands. Um, and there's a couple different, um, I guess, schools of thought on this. It can help if you ask your patient to wash their hands with warm water um, before you do the AccuCheck, if, if that's a possibility, um, because it will cause, it'll help with that vasodilation to get them the blood flow in there. Um, also then cleans the hands. Um, oftentimes though in facility, what you'll actually see is just them using a cotton, uh, cotton ball, a alcohol swab um, to clean the area. Um, and so either is okay. Um, in the home setting, a lot of people will just do the hand washing first. Um, it can also help to keep the hand in a dependent position for a little bit before, just to get, again, that blood flowing there a little bit um, more. Um, and so the typical site, and I think um, most people have seen this done or know about this, is, is the fingers. And not just anywhere on the fingers. You want to do um, the side of the finger pad. You don't want to go right on that finger pad because, as you guys know, that's a really um, sensitive area. So you don't want to poke right into that sensitive area. You can just go along the side is a little bit um, nicer. And you want to, um, it depends on the patient, but kind of nice to change up the finger too so that they don't constantly have that um, same finger, same spot poked. Um, and alternating sites, uh, if the fingers aren't 
a, an available option anymore. Um, you will stop, sometimes see people do it in the toes, a little less common because of maybe diabetic neuropathies. Um, you can do ear lobes, um, you could do the palm of the hand, the heel of the foot. So there's a lot of different uh, options if for some reason the person's fingers aren't um, available, but most commonly sides of the fingers. So um, we'll get started. Um, we're gonna set up our machine. Um, so when you take it out, this is its charger, its charging base. So when you can, you wanna remember to put your machine back on its charging base so that it's not dead for the next person. Um, and uh, this machine in hospital actually gets calibrated with um, spe special uh, solution. Um, it gets calibrated once daily so that it's ready to go. Um, and it will give you a warning if it needs to be calibrated because if it's not calibrated um, in its uh, required time frame, it actually won't function. And you want this thing always ready to function, um, especially if maybe there's an emergent situation where it might be the person is unconscious because of a critically low blood sugar, you want to be able to know that pretty quickly. So um, always make sure this thing's on its charger, ready to go, doesn't need to be calibrated. Um, the calibration process is very straightforward and it just kind of walks you through some prompts. So we won't cover that, but um, just some notes. So when you're using this, it's kind of like a, at the supermarket, it's a barcode scanner. You press OK to kind of wake it up. You press OK again. Um, and you're gonna press OK uh, because it's OK slash scan, and then it will scan with that red laser that you just saw, um, and then you just push OK through its prompts. It gives you the code of the um, strips, and then you hit OK, and then you know you're good to go when it gives you this message of insert the strip into the top. So I typically put it down, open up my strips there. Ooh. Sometimes they stick together. You don't want to handle them too, too much. Um, and you just kind of press it in until it gives you that prompt. And that's telling you that it's ready to be touched to the blood. So now my machine is ready. And you don't want to do this too far in advance because it does kind of time out after a while. Um, I do actually typically get this ready ahead of time and then just sort of give the screen a little tap to keep it awake as I go. Um, so we're ready to go to our patient then when we have, we'll grab a cotton ball our alcohol swab and our lancet uh, set to the, the middle um, uh, length. And we're gonna go to our patient's hand is conveniently here placed for us. We will wear gloves typically for this uh, procedure because there is likely a risk of coming into contact with the patient's um, blood. So we'd explain to the patient what we're doing. Likely they've had this done before, but if not, you'd wanna explain it to them. Um, you want to know your normal blood sugar, um, your baseline for this patient, um, what would be considered dangerously high, low, are they having any symptoms of either hyper or hypoglycemia, those kinds of things. Um, but again, this video is kind of strictly about taking the, the blood sugar. So I'm going to open our alcohol swab. Do you have a preference of finger? No? Okay. We'll go for your closest one here to me. So we're going to clean on the side there. Um, or perhaps we had her wash her hands with warm water beforehand. Um, and now we're just going to put the lancet flush up against the skin and we're just gonna depress it. Um, and you don't wanna put too much pressure because that's actually kind of painful for the person too. And you also, and I have seen this happen before unfortunately, don't want to move the lancet while you're depressing because it can actually cause like a, a bit of a slice instead of just, all we want is it to poke and come back out. And you'll see that needle goes away it doesn't stay sticking out. Um, and what I just did there was wipe the first bleb of blood away and then we just re-milk it so we get another one. Just because that first bleb of blood can be more serous fluid sometimes than blood. So we like to um, get a real blood sample where we know. So now the next step is to touch the strip to that bleb of blood. Um, you don't wanna dip it under, you don't wanna f f get blood all on top of that strip. It's got a capillary action in there, it'll just suck it right up, just like it did once you touch it to it. Um, so our patient's um, blood sugar is 4.3, which is excellent within normal range. Uh, so you wanna get rid of your strip um, and your so contaminated supplies and put it into your um, sharps container um, or whichever uh, 
container your facility uh, provides for that. Um, and then also we do clean these machines with our um, disinfectant wipes between each patient use in case there did you did get blood there um, or somewhere on the machine. So you can just kind of wipe it down really well. Um, another thing that I guess I didn't specifically mention with this type of machine, um, after you've touched the blood to it, um, to the test strip, you actually should just hold it um, flat like this to see it. You don't want to hold it up like this or down, just kind of hold it flat. Um, just helps it um, keep working because these things do break sometimes um, or get stuff into that uh, strip hole. So you just kind of want to hold it flat while you're waiting for that blood sugar to read. Um, it will tell you they have a range of what they can read. Some machines can read from 1.1 to into the 40s. Um, and after those um, basically on either ends of that spectrum, it will just read critical high or critical low and tell you it's higher than this or lower than this. And and that would cue you in, I need to act fast now, this person's in a critical high or low. Um, it'll turn red when it's um, out of range, out of normal range. So this one's giving it to us in blue. Um, so again, we'll get rid of all this uh, in the proper um, garbage or waste. Uh, similarly for the um, home device, if you're ever helping someone set one up to go home with, um, it's good to kind of know the basics of it. This one is kind of neat. It's very straightforward, very simple. It has no buttons or um, anything on it. So it actually turns on when you um, put the strip in. Um, otherwise, then the, the process is basically identical. I kind of like when strips come out of packages like this because it allows you to avoid touching the strip. So you heard it beep there, it comes on and it's ready to be tested now. So it reads the last blood sugar check on there too. Um, so similar, you're gonna poke the person inside of the finger, just touch it to the blood, it will suck up the blood and it does a countdown from 29. So it takes about 30 seconds for it to give you the reading and then the reading just comes up like this. So the last one was 7.5, so that's kind of what it'll look like. It'll just say the, the blood sugar on it. So if you're, again, helping somebody set that up at home, oftentimes, um, depending on the supplies that the person is sent home with, they sometimes will send them home with a small sharps container um, or some of them um, will have a place to, to bring their sharps um, supplies sort of uh, every once in a while to, to dump or offload. Um, so you'll, yeah, you can go over, these are pretty straightforward once you understand the, the concept of the bigger one. The home machines are all pretty similar and, and straightforward. So that's the basics.